Today I've got a nice number theory problem that comes from an Argentinian math Olympiad from 2008. So our goal is to find all natural numbers x and y where y is bigger than or equal to 2 such that x to the y is equal to some number that ends in 2008. So I've just written that in this form. We've got this big block of digits which we don't really care about and then like I said it ends in 2008. And we're going to use modular arithmetic here. So let's just recall that we say that a is congruent to b mod n if and only if n divides a minus b. So I've got a whole course on number theory if you want to brush up on that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's get into the solution. So let's suppose we have a solution x and y and let's see if we can get some restrictions on that solution until the point that we know exactly what x and y are. Okay, so that means that we know x to the y power is equal to some number which I'll call a times 10 to the 4 plus 2008. And this sum number times 10 to the 4 is just encoding all of these digits that are over on the left hand side of our number. And now let's factor these a little bit. So this is going to be sum number times 5 to the 4 times 2 to the 4 plus then factoring 2008 that will be 2 cubed times 251. And now let's notice that this is congruent to 0 modulo 8. That's because here we've got a multiple of 16, here we have a multiple of 8. So those are both multiples of 8. But this is not congruent to 0 mod 16. In fact, you can check that this is 8 mod 16. So this big bit right here is congruent to 0 mod 16, and then the leftover stuff is 8 mod 16. Okay, great. So let's also note that x is even. So that's pretty clear because the right hand side is even and if we're taking a power of a odd number that'll always be odd. Okay, so now that means we can take x to be equal to 2n and see what that does for us. So we have x to the y is the same thing as 2 to the y times n to the y and like we had before that has to be 0 mod 8 but 8 mod 16. But that restricts the values of y because we've got a 2 to the y here. Notice y cannot be bigger than or equal to 4 because if y is bigger than or equal to 4, then this thing is automatically 0 mod 8 or 0, zero mod 16. Okay, so that means that y is not bigger than or equal to 4. That means it comes from the set 2 or 3. But notice if y is equal to 2, then that implies that n is even as well. But if n is even as well, then that will imply that x to the y is congruent to 0 mod 16. Because we'll pick up a 2 to the 2 from this, and we'll pick up at least a multiple of 4 from this n to the y. So that means y cannot be equal to 2. So that means that we've restricted y all the way down to the number 3. But now let's plug that back into our original equation where we use the fact that x is 2 to the n and so we have 8 n cubed is the same thing as a times 10 to the 4 plus 2 cubed times 251. Now we can divide both sides by 8 and we'll get n cubed is equal to, so this will be 1250 a plus 251. Okay, so let's bring that data up to the top and then we'll work towards the end. Okay, so far we've determined that y had to be equal to 3 in our equation. We also wrote x as 2 times n and then n satisfies the following equation. n cubed is 1250a plus 251. 
And now we're gonna reduce this whole thing mod 250. The motivation here is that this is most definitely a multiple of 250. This is five times 250. And then this is one more than a multiple of 50. So that means we get this nice equation or congruence n cubed is congruent to one mod 250. And that'll give us n to the 99th power is congruent to one modulo 250. And that seems like a strange step until you note the following fact, and that is Euler's totient function of 250 is 100 which is particularly helpful because by Euler's theorem, we know that n to Euler's totient function of 250 will be congruent to one mod 250. So in other words, we have n to the 100 is congruent to one mod 250. Obviously that only works if n and 250 are relatively prime, but we know that they're relatively prime because this up here shows that n is invertible mod 250, which is only possible if it's relatively prime to 250. Okay, so now what we'll do is take this congruence and this congruence and divide them, and that will immediately tell us that n itself is congruent to one mod 250. But if n is congruent to one mod 250, that means that we can write n as 250 times m plus one. So we've got a nice format of n at the moment. Okay, so now let's bring that back into our, well, it's not quite our original equation, but the equation that's at the top of the board here, and let's see what that gives us. So we have 250 m, plus one quantity cubed is equal to 1250A plus 250 plus one. I've written that 251 as 250 plus one. And now let's cube this using the binomial formula. That'll give us 250 cubed times M cubed plus three times 250 squared times M squared plus three times 250 M plus one equals five times 250 times A plus 250 plus one. Okay, good. And now what we'll do is take these ones on either side of the equation and have them cancel each other. And then notice everything that's left over is a multiple of 250. So we can multiply by one over 250 or divide this entire equation by 250. And let's notice that we'll be left with 250 times a bunch of stuff. So I'll just put that as this pink line. And that's condensing down from all of this. So notice if I divide all of the stuff which I've underlined in green by 250, it's still a multiple of 250. So I can factor that 250 out. And then we'll have plus three times M is equal to five times a plus one. And so that's from dividing everything on the right hand side by 250. Okay, now let's reduce this mod five. So 250 is a multiple of five, five times a is obviously a multiple of five. That gives us three times m is congruent to one modulo five. But we can solve that congruence. The inverse of three mod five is two mod five because three times two is six, which is one mod five. So that tells us that M is congruent to two modulo five. But in the end, that means that we can write M as five K plus two. Okay, good. And that's our final version from M. And then all we have to do from here is push it all the way back to our original variable X, which we'll do on our final board. We're almost done. We determined that Y was equal to three. Then we have X is equal to two N. N is 250 M plus one and M is five K plus two. Now we just have to do a bunch of composition of those variables back together to get a final formula for 
x. So in fact, we'll have infinitely many solutions here. So let's notice that x is equal to two times n, which is 250 m, but m is 5k plus two, and then we'll have a plus one there. Okay, great. So that's gonna give us, let's see, two, and then we'll have 1250k plus 501, and then multiplying the two through will give us 2500k plus 1002. So that means x has that formula. And then you can check by cubing x that it will most definitely end in 2008. So finally, we have the following set of solutions. We have solutions 2500k plus 1002, comma, 3, 4, and that's a good place to stop.